So I'm out again looking for wildflowers. This is a bit later on now, so the trout lilies have got their their um, their flowers. The leeks are getting more of a solid uh, root structure to them. <laughs> I can still smell them in the forest behind me. Uh, the colt's foot that looked like dandelion, they're now to a fluff. They're 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 done. Those are the ones you see along the roadside and stuff like that. And all those earlier ones are now dying off. And now we've got things like trilliums, jack in the pulpit. Hopefully some, some May apple. Uh, yeah. This little woodlot has everything. It's so diverse. Beautiful trail too. Okay, just found some May, May apple. It's all over the place here. <laughs> Fantastic. Doesn't have, have its flower yet. I will be coming out soon, but yeah, let's have a look at it. Yeah, so here we go. We got May apple, little umbrella. And uh, there's where the flower is going to come out. It's a little white flower. It's beautiful. And then it's, if it has two stems, it has a flower. If it has one stem, it doesn't have a flower. Whether that's the male and that's the female, I'm not sure, but that's the way it goes. This white flower then turns into a small little apple. And um, uh, that will be on it until probably oh mid-August. And then it will become... A ripe fruit so you can see it all behind me it's a uh, grows everywhere and uh, yeah so that flower turns into a, a, a fruit that looks like an apple miniature apple what's called called may apple and um, then uh, that stays on the plant until about oh mid-august and then it becomes ripe and I know some people eat it even make jelly out of it when it's ripe but if you get it wrong it'll kill you Okay, so I don't know if it's worth the jelly. And um, yeah, so when it's really ripe, uh, you can eat the, the inside. Um, but if you eat it before or any other part of the plant, it, it's poisonous. So uh, also, deer, mice, raccoons, possums love it when it's fresh. When it's ripe too, and the animals know when it's ripe. I find that really cool. They won't eat it when it's not because it's poisonous. But um, yeah, so most likely you won't even get to pick it because the animals will get to it first, which is good. We got grocery stores, they don't, just saying. <laughs> yeah, so look at it, it's all over the place here. Doesn't have the flower yet, just came up. Again, this is Mother's Day weekend actually, so it's the second week in May. And uh, black flies are just coming out now, but they're not biting. Give it a, get a few more days of this warm weather. So again, just to show you, little kind of umbrella like leaf almost like a gnome would be living under this this in a rainstorm but if it has two stems then it will have a flower and that's where the flower comes out and then it will turn into the fruit may apple so the trillium is Antero's flower it was actually um noted to be Antero's flower uh just after world war one for uh, uh just to have a flower to represent all the lost soldiers and uh, why that was chosen is the three leaves and three petals, and it represents the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, and also Britain, Ireland, and uh, Scotland. So uh, that's why it was chosen. It was illegal to pick for many years. I think it's okay to pick now, but I wouldn't. The reason why is not because it's Antero's flower. It's because when you pick it, it... it <laughs> It just dies. If you actually just pick this leaf off, this whole thing will die. So it's a very sensitive plant. It actually takes seven years for it to get this flower. So yeah, yeah, just leave it alone. It's a beautiful, beautiful uh, plant. This will actually shrivel up um, and go back to the root system in a couple weeks once the broad leaves come out. And that doesn't give it a long time for it to produce a flower. So what it does is the year before, it creates the flower in the root system. So when the plant comes up in the spring, it actually is well ahead of the game. So yeah, uh, beautiful flower. I'm trying to think of anything else I know about it. I just like it. <laughs> We've got red trillium in, in, in the woods here as well, and I'll, I'll show you that, but this is more prominent here because it lo loves loamy soil. This is a maple and beech wood lot. Yeah. There's gotta be a lot more than just this little guy around here. I gotta find more. It's a better specimen here. It's white trillium. Again, three leaves and three petals, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, England, Ireland, 
Scotland there. It's, I think it was 1937 when they introduced this into the school system, being Ontario's flower after World War One. Nice trillium there with some hepatica in the background when I showed in the last video. That flower comes out way before the trillium, so it's got like one flower left on it where this guy, this trillium is just starting. Yeah, cool cycle. Really cool cycle. Yeah, so we have red trilliums here, more in the uh, acidic soil where all the pine were. We got a whole bunch of white trillium here in a maple and beechwood lot. Man, there's a lot of leak in here. I better make sure I don't tell anybody where I am. So, uh, yeah, and uh, we've got some trillium that are rosy color and just a mixture. Man, there's a lot of wildflowers in here. This is fantastic. I love this time of year. Everything's just coming alive. So, right behind me here, I have red trillium. They, uh, they grow more of acidic soil than white trillium. And, uh, um, yeah, they actually also pollinate different. Uh, they don't smell nice. They smell terrible. They smell like rotten flesh. <laughs> and insects are attracted to them because of that. So that's the difference between red trillium and white trillium. So what we have right here is the beginning of a jack in the pulpit. And it's called jack in the pulpit because there's jack inside, or Jill. <laughs> Both, there's male and female plants. And um, how they reproduce or pollinate, sorry, is uh, a fungal gnat fly goes inside and um, it can't find its way out and it gets irritated trying to get out and then gets pollen all over it but then there's a little exit hole and it gets out and then does that mistake again to another jack of pulpit or jill and pulpit or jack whatever and um, then does it again and that's how they pollinate so yeah jack and pulpit later on they'll get a bunch of red berries okay another little jack in the pulpit or jill in the pulpit depending so yeah, there's the little rain guard for it. <laughs> Jack in his pulpit. But yeah, they look the same, the male and female. So it could be Jill, it could be Jack. And it's just starting too, eh? Well, these haven't even come out yet. So this wood lot used to be an incredible place to view the, the beach. But they're all dying now. There's a there's a beach disease that's happening around this area, all the way up towards Algonquin. I live just about two hours south of Algonquin. And um, it's a fungal infection that uh, gets in by holes in the tree that are created by beetles. So um, yeah, it's just going crazy here. It's interesting. I think I moved up here over 30 years ago. I've always gone in this wood lot. And you see the progression or degression or whatever, the changes. Not that I'm old, but I'm getting there. Oh yeah, and Angel's not with me today, my dog. Uh, she's uh, spending the day with my daughter. <laughs> yeah, so uh, this is fine. It's kind of odd though. I think it's the first time I've been out on the trail without the dog for a long, long time. Yeah, but she's taking her out, so yeah, it's fine. <laughs> I miss my dog. <laughs> So look behind me, look at the difference. So I started off on the southern facing slope in a deciduous woodlot, mainly deciduous, beech, maple. And now I'm going through a hemlock stand. These are massive hemlock, by the way. I think this is why this place is protected. But look at, we're on the northern slope and not much vegetation because those are conifers and they actually have needles blocking the sunlight. Whereas in the deciduous, those broad leaves haven't come out yet which is why it's alive with spring flowers. All you've got here is trout lily, and this is the second week in May and they haven't even flowered, whereas up on the other side of the ridge, they've flowered and they're, they're probably got, only got two weeks left. Totally different. So yeah, on the north facing side of the hill, uh, it gets less sunlight than the south facing, okay? Which is pretty cool to know if you don't have a compass. Yeah, here's another example. So that's bloodroot. 
and uh, the blood root <laughs> on the south facing slope they're basically done whereas this guy's just starting and uh, he's underneath a huge hemlock huge hemlock wow that's cool Okay, I like to point out, first of all, I was a kid as well, and I made forts in the woods as well. I get it. <laughs> but two rules you need to know in the province of Ontario. In a provincial park, that's illegal, because there's green boughs on it. The old growth hemlock that's around here, and that's why this place is here. And also, if you are on Crown land, you can build a survival shelter if needed for survival, but you must dismantle it before you leave. Just saying, those are the rules. And, you know, rules are made for a reason. That's why you have to stop at a red light. Okay, this is Colt's foot. So it looks like a dandelion, but it's not a dandelion. And uh, it's one of the first to come up. You see them in road ditches a lot, but it's gone to fluff now, right? Which is uh, an indicator that the trilliums will be up. So this guy's, he flowers before the trillium. And then, seeds just before it cold foot I don't know why it's called cold foot though <laughs> yeah look that up so I'm just in a different area again just near my house uh, I'm gonna look for one thing I couldn't find in the other place marsh marigolds one of my favorite I'm pretty sure they're blooming big time now so I know a big swamp down here I'm gonna have a look which way do I go this way. Another one. <laughs> Another one of my favorite spring flowers, marsh marigold. And uh, yeah, this is a beautiful spot for it. Uh, it's a lowland marsh, <laughs> marsh marigold. And I don't know if it belongs to the marigold family. It's got to. I don't know. I'll have to look into that. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can eat this when it first comes out. You can eat the leaves, but you have to boil the leaves like three times, five times. Um, why? <laughs> why bother? Uh, just make yourself a salad from Loblaws. Uh, they're highly poisonous once they get older. So don't even think of eating the leaves when they get older. And if you have cattle, I don't have cattle, but if you have cattle, don't let the, let the cattle eat them. It's because it's poisonous to them too. But they probably know that. So let's have a closer look at it. Okay, so heart-shaped leaf. Finely serrated. Single serrations. Beautiful yellow flower. And it grows rampant in one area. Like a little one swamp like this. There's some cool ferns in here right now. They're coming up too, but I'll do ferns later. Okay, this sounds a little odd, but I smell a bear, and uh, just keep an eye for it. And you're like, what do you mean you smell a bear? They stink. They uh, they smell like a like a pig, <laughs> and um, I know that smell. Another one. Another one. Ooh. Be calm, Kevin. Be calm. If you're wondering where my basket pack is, which I love, uh, I'm wearing a different one today. It's because it, this usually is a busy area, but there are not many people out on, on this part of the trail. They're all over the other place. But uh, yeah, last couple of times I was out, there I am taking pictures and talking about wildflowers on the ground. and. Everybody just assumes if I have a basket, then I'm harvesting. And uh, I'm not against harvesting, but I wouldn't here. And uh, um, so I don't want them to think that I, I am doing that. So I'm just wearing a regular backpack. I, who knew that if you have a basket on instead of a pack that you're harvesting wild edibles? <laughs> I didn't know. Oh, well, <laughs> fancy that. I just met a hiker. And uh, he said uh, he just saw a bear. <laughs> it's a 
true story, true story. So, I smelt it, and he saw it. <laughs> and we're both alive to tell the tale. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> oh man. Oh well. The adventure continues.